Today I'm going to be working on a Aroma scooter. This one's uh, called a Sorrento. Uh, customers brought it in uh, saying the status light, which is that here, is flashing. Okay, so first thing we do is we switch it on. We find out how many times it flashes. So let's switch it on. And there we are flashing. So it's about the battery power index flashing. So what we want to do is we want to wait till there's a gap in the flash and then we want to count them. So it's seven flashes and that will flash constant now seven times. Seven flashes actually mean the throttle is a throttle problem. Okay, the throttle problem in this case is it means check the throttle, it may not be connected properly. Um, as well, it could mean that it's in uh, out of neutral and power up. So that means out of neutral means that's neutral the way it's here. If you pull the lever before you switch it on, that's out of neutral. So it always has to be in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick it a few times here. It looks okay. Spring's working fine. Switch it off and switch it on again, just in case it was out of neutral. And no, it's still flashing away. So it'll flash away seven times. Uh, out of neutral. Oh, look, there it stopped there. And I can hear clicking from the electric brake. The lights are on at the back. Um, so, so I can hear the electric brakes clicking on the back. So it's telling me there's a problem that's not centered properly. So let me see if it'll work. And now the brakes are coming on again. I can hear it's on. I can't push the scooter. Oh, in reverse. There's a problem for going in reverse. Seven times again. There is a problem with that throttle pod, I believe. Customers also brought the scooter to me and it was soaking wet. There was water stuck inside here, right? Customers left outside. Um, so there could be an issue with water ingress, water getting in there somehow in the rain, causing that problem. Uh, one minute, as you see, it didn't work, and now it suddenly worked. Let me switch it off again and on again. Yeah, wait, it's no flashing now. Reverse. Oh, no, no going reverse. Electric brakes coming on intermittently. Switch it on and off again. So it is centered, but there's a problem. Forward, reverse. So there's a problem with the throttle pod in reverse position. So what we need to do is we need to change the throttle pod. Okay, flashing seven times again. So to change the throttle pod in Sorrento, very easy. You've got to remove this with a small grub screw here. That screw there, and then there's two at the bottom. One, two. That'll need to come off, and then to get the tiller, um, tiller cover off at the top, unscrew that, and it'll lift off. So I'll dismantle that, and then show you how to get to the throttle pod. So I'm just removing the wig wag lever here so that we can remove the, the body panel 
to gain access to the throttle pod to replace that. Not the easiest to gain access to. There's two grub screws in this one. Right, that's it. Right, that's just got access to the throttle pod. Now if I bring this a bit closer. If I bring this camera closer, you can actually see the rust round about here. So there's definitely some water being gone into there. So what I'm going to do is going to remove these two screws here and replace that pot. And we'll show you how to do that as well. I'll fast forward it. You can slow it down and pause it. Very easy. Phillips screwdriver here. That will come off. Um, and then the, the pot will come off no problem. Then we'll replace the pot by resoldering a new pot on that. There we can see the, the rust around here, uh, some corrosion down here as well. Um, so there's water's definitely got in there. So what we'll do is we'll take this onto the workbench and replace the pot and resolder the wires onto the new pot. Okay, that's just now got um the throttle pod on a workbench and we can clearly see now in more light that there's there's corrosion round about the, the spacer the spring washer the nut even some corrosion on the spring here as well and here it's clearly visible so water damage okay what we need to do first is we need to dismantle this now if you've not done this before i'd uh, i'd recommend to take some pictures take pictures because you need to unsolder these connections here off the pot um and put it all back together. Uh, so highly recommend, not done it before, take some pictures. Okay, so let's remove the grub screws from here. Just a couple of turns. You don't physically have to remove the grub screw. So that should then slide out. Okay, I'll put that aside. Remove the spring. The springs are available. We do sell the springs as well, but it looks all right. So your spacer. Now we need to remove the locking nut here. Oh. A bit better if I got the right spanner. There you go. There we are, that's it removed. So we've got quite a few pieces here. We'll keep it in that order. So what we need to now do is uh, unsolder these connections here. Unsolder these, we'll take this off with a the heat shrink. We'll take that off here, we'll undo that here. Ensuring that I don't slip and cut myself. I mean, that's so we'll do that. We'll un take that off. Ah, 
that's enough to get the soldering iron in there. What we'll do, we'll heat that up and uh, we'll take off the, the wires and then we'll put it on the new one here. Okay, it's exactly the same, RVQ24Y S08-03. Now, the B50S stands for the length of the shaft. That piece here from here to here is 50 millimeters, so it's five centimeters. Should also have a five uh, B502, and that tells me it's a 5K resistor. Okay, so it has to be a 5K resistor, and it's not just any resistor. It'll have two and a half K one side and two and a half K the other side for forward and reverse. So I'm just going to clamp that in here and remove it. Remove these wires. Yeah, this is now we soldered the wires back on the, the pot exactly the same way as it came off. We put heat shrink on. You don't need to do it if you don't have it. Uh, but it just stops the water from getting in there and stops the contacts just in case a piece of wire frees off. So let's reassemble this. We put the throttle pod back on from underneath. And of course, if you've got to take pictures and you may be struggling. So we put our spring washer on, we'll put the new one on, the washer, that'll be that washer there, new nut, don't over tighten it, just tighten it. If you over tighten it, you may break the, the relocating grommet off, off the plate. As you try to tighten it, it kind of spins the pot itself. So, then we've got the spacer. Spring goes back on. Look. And now the important thing is, is to center the pot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the scooter, join it up uh, with the wiring loom and then center it. The easy way to, to center it, you don't have a, a resistance meter etc. Sometimes it can be slightly out, is to turn it all the way to one side, to the left, it's pointing down there. Turn it all the way back to that side, so that side's pointing there, and then you point it halfway in between. So it's straight in line with more or less the centre wire. So more or less, it can be out slightly, that can be out slightly, or the other side out slightly. You'll see it won't work, it'll start to flash the seven times. So it's more or less centred. I'll take my Allen key once it's centred, and I will stick that in there and tighten it. And I will just reassemble it. Okay, so let's, back, let's head back to the scooter and uh, fit this on and see how we get on. Okay, I've stuck the throttle back on. I'm not fitting it on because then I won't get access to the grub, grubs, um, grub screws here. I've got my screwdriver in case I need to twist this to centre it properly. Let's see how we go on. I'm more or less on the workbench, set it to the middle. So I'm pointing to the middle of the wire, let's switch ignition on and see if we're getting a flash. We're not getting a flash, it's a good thing I've more or less sent it right, but I'm still going to check it. 
So it's going in forwards, and now suddenly it's going in reverse again because I've not tightened the screw. So let me turn it back a bit. As we turn it back a bit, centered it. So I'm going to tighten that just a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. So let's try it again. That's forward. And this time it's working in reverse. It's not cutting out and flashing again as it did before. Let's try again, reverse. And it's weights clicking on. So I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten these now. See, I've moved it. So it's not centered. As I was tightening that grub screw, it's moved. So what I need to do is slacken it again and tighten it, but gently. So I don't move that lever. Once, twice, let's check it now. Uh, it's not evenly, it's not even. I need to push it more to the center there. Tighten again. I'm looking at when I'm turning it, I'm turning both the same distance. What I'm looking at is the spring here to see if it moves before it starts to engage the brake and starts to move. So I'm looking at the distance here. So when I turn it, that's how much it's moving before. And that should be more or less the same for reverse. And that's more or less the same distance. So. I'm not going to tighten this a bit at a time. So it's no move this time. I'm happy it's tight. I always try it a few times to make sure that when I let go, it's in the center because what you don't want is to have it in the center and it starts to move. Right, I'm happy with that. That's tight. It's going to get secured exactly the same way, but we're back onto the scooter. Um, again, if you can't remember how, to, how you've done it, you should have taken pictures before you dismantled it.